Hi, I'm Rosemary Barton. Tonight, the federal government wants to make it harder for organized criminals to operate and easier for police to investigate them. The Justice Minister announced, announced changes to the criminal code today. So is this a case of giving the justice system the tools it needs to crack down on organized crime, or as the opposition charges, a transparent attempt to duck the controversies over unreported crimes and the long-form census? Here to weigh in in studio are Conservative MP Dean Del Mastro and Liberal Public safety critic Mark Holland, who just arrived in the nick of time. I've got to get my jabs in. And NDP justice critic Joe Comartin joins us there from sunny Windsor. Good to see you all, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Okay, Hi, Dean, Dean, let's start with you. Sure. Um, much of the reasoning behind this decision, I guess, is to try and close up some loopholes. Um, what were the loopholes that existed before, uh, before this went into effect that would have prevented uh, you from convicting people for, for crimes? Well, uh, Essentially, the way that yeah. these were labeled and the way that these were uh, uh, considered within the criminal code was preventing police and, and crown uh, prosecutors. It was it was just not giving them all the tools that they needed to properly prosecute and, in fact, uh, to keep our community safe from the threat of organized crime. So we've made these changes. They're supported by all uh, provincial and territorial uh, justice ministers. Obviously, the Ontario Provincial Police were there. Uh, Quebec uh, Provincial Police Forces uh, were there as well supporting mm -hmm. uh, this announcement today. We think it's very significant and, uh, frankly, we're very proud of it. So it's things like, for instance, uh, making, uh, making some offenses more serious organizing uh, betting pools or you know owning a, a body house or uh, prostitution that kind of thing making them more offensive so given given that reality mark what's so wrong with wanting to do that well I don't have anything uh, problem with necessarily what was announced at least the talking points of what we've gotten uh, why they waited four years um, four and a half years to bring it in I don't know uh, why they didn't bother to bring it before Parliament uh, before a parliamentary committee so we can make sure that it's being gotten right and there aren't things being missed I don't understand. Uh, the issue with pardons, uh, we heard four and a half years ago, then Minister Day say, oh, we fixed the pardon issue, and they did a similar type of announcement where they avoided Parliament, they avoided committee, only to find out, no, they hadn't changed anything, that there were still all kinds of problems. So uh, that's the first point. The second one is, is that this is about them being in all kinds of trouble. They've sat on this announcement for two weeks. They've got a mess with the census. They've nonsense. got a mess with unreported crime. Uh, and it is nonsense. Dean's right <laughs> about that. It is complete nonsense. Yeah, and what they're trying to no do... Such thing as I, let, let, me, let me finish. I was very Nonsense. patient listening to, your, to, to you speak. Um, I, I think that the problem here is, is the government's in a lot of trouble. They've been sitting on this for a couple of weeks, and they said, let's announce this to try to see if we can turn the channel. And they do this all the time. Uh, Stockwell Day uh, gave one of the most ridicul ridiculous, nonsensical um, press conferences I've ever seen. And I, I think this was an ideal time to try to get the, the channel changed. But they're, they're circumventing Parliament. Um, they're not working with us. And at the same time, when it comes to organized crime, for more than four years now, law enforcement agencies have been asking for better uh, rules around lawful access. We've been demanding to get that legislation uh, implemented. We've been saying we've got to modernize the rules that allow police to go after criminals online, that follow them th uh, through where they, uh, they track the, uh, their activities and where they organize themselves in cyberspace. And this government has, has either sat on the bill or prorogued to kill the bill or it's sat forever. So, uh, Let me ask you okay. a little bit of, you. I guess you want to respond to Mark Holland, but also talk maybe about this unreported crime issue that Stockwell Day brought up yesterday. I don't know if he was told to bring it up or if he just brought it up inadvertently, but um, you think there's some basis there for the government to move forward with more issues? Or? There's absolutely unreported crime that goes on in Canada. I can't even believe that he could sit in his chair and, and in any way indicate that it's not a problem in Canada. It is most certainly a problem in Canada. In fact, Statistics Canada came out and reported in 2004 that one-third of crime victims don't report it. That's what Canadians are saying, and that's what Minister Day was getting at. And why are some of these people not reporting it? It's because of people like Mr. Holland that are soft on criminals, that believe frankly that the victim is the person that commits the crime not the person that was the victim of the crime in many cases and I'll tell you I'll tell you that they do not feel that they are going to be adequately protected by the law in some cases so they don't they don't report that crime that happens regularly in Canada and it's because That's of Mark why, Holland no I, I, his positions that he takes often arguing for things for like two for one credit and so forth uh, for pretrial custody he's in fact argued on behalf of that he, he doesn't uh, he's constantly arguing that 
that uh, our agenda, that uh, where we want to get serious with criminals, where we want to make sure that there are adequate penalties in, in place, in law, that we are dealing with, the, like today's announcement. But let's be honest, he talked about we had four years to deal with this. Well, they were in government 13 years before that and didn't deal okay. with it. And he, and he now indicates, now he indicates could, that I, this if, is somehow a priority for the if Liberal if Party. Could, they don't even ask questions on justice in the House of Commons. Okay, so that's Mark, how much of a priority it is. Well, well Mark Holland does my, ask questions. Now, now, yeah, I, I've never been accused of not asking questions before. That's <laughs> I hear him yelling all the time in there. I've never been accused for the crime problems in Canada before, but I guess there's, I guess that's the kind of hyperbole that goes on here. Look, the reality is, the, the just, uh, Mr. Day yesterday said that uh, we needed more prisons so that we could put away the people who are, uh, who are committing unreported crimes. Uh, how are you going to convict and arrest people uh, who, are, who are committing crimes that haven't been uh, reported? I mean, you're going to sus round up everybody who looks suspicious? And secondly, uh, the other ridiculous statement he made is that, well, it's you know, in the ridiculous. 1960s, uh, crimes used to be a lot more reported. Well, in the 1960s, violence against women, domestic violence, rape were much less reported than they are today. The only evidence he could give is to ignore all the other information that StatsCan has and go to a 2004 study that says that there are, there's a minor increase in some okay. types of unreported crimes, most of which would be things like shoplifting, One third. which I don't think One you're going to try to solve okay, for I got to get Joe in solution. here because otherwise he'll have come all out and gotten himself all pretty for nothing. <laughs> Joe Co. Martin, what do you make of today's announcement? And I guess what do you make of Stockwell's, uh, Stockwell Day's comments about the un unreported crimes? Well, the announcement today was one that should have been taken care of. The, the provincial authorities were asking for this back in, in 2007, and this was uh, able to be done very quickly, as, as we saw, because they did it very quickly. should have been done back then. The, the one reservation I have about it is that it could be used over, uh, they could overextend the use of it. This thing is to be used only when it involves real organized crime uh, gangs and, and associations, and it could be used much more extensively. Um, so the government has a responsibility to monitor this. With regards to to uh, Mr. Day's comments, um, look, um, there is no question that we have unreported crimes, but they have got absolutely minimal, minimal evidence of whether it's changed much in the last little while. What is clear is uh, uh, violent crime in particular is going down. Uh, crime overall has been going down for 20 years. Uh, the reporting function uh, is fluctuated during that period of time. Mark's correct. Uh, sexual assaults, uh, uh, crimes against children, um, those types of crimes were way underreported, uh, are being reported more so now. They still, they're, they're still an underreporting function here, but the, the valid statistics we've got, uh, which refute all of that, the valid statistics we've got is that violent crime uh, and crime overall is decreasing in Canada and has been for 20 years. But I guess the Conservatives would say to that, uh, it's because of you. Is that what you would say, Dino no, Master, or no, what would, would you say? I would argue that crime rates in Canada are still too high. I think a lot of Canadians, justifiably, uh, have concerns around some of the rates of violent crime that they see, things that they see in their community. I know people in my community are, are concerned when they see, uh, frankly, we had a couple of murders committed in Peterborough last year. Those things are not common uh, in Peterborough. When we have these things happening, this is clearly an escalation of violent crime that we need to deal with. We need, just need to make sure that there are it's measures not, in the law and protections in place. Our that, murder that rate, our murder rate has gone down so consistently. Like victims in their own homes. Right across the country. Now, what Mr. Holland doesn't understand when he talks about uh, uh, Mr. Day's comments on unreported crime. People that often are not reporting crime are not reporting crime for a couple of reasons. One of which is that they are frankly afraid that if they report it that the system may not be able to protect them. He is trying to, to be Mark Holland here. He's, 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 he's said uh, what I think of in about seven oh, different I, subjects. Because so let you, me tell you what you I do. On it so Dean, often, well, I appreciate that you're trying to listen, but you're not hearing me, Dean. Uh, what I'm saying very clearly is that when we've seen a 70 percent cut to spending in crime prevention, when we've seen a 41 percent cut to the Victims of Crime Initiative, when I go across this country uh, and I to listen to groups, and I was in Dean's riding uh, only a couple of weeks ago, hearing from groups that are talking about the fact that they're losing the capacity at a community level to stop crimes before they happen. And they're watching like a giant vacuum, money being sucked into the prison system to chase after a model that failed miserably in the United States that means permanently increased prison populations, uh, that means that you're going to want
wind up with a less safe society, where in places like California they have a recidivism rate of 71%. It's not a model we want to follow. I want to say we need early intervention. We need to deal with mental health issues. We need to deal with addiction issues. And, of course, when somebody commits a serious crime, that we incarcerate them for long and serious time. But that we don't just use that as a solution for everybody. Okay. And that's what this government is doing. Okay, Joe.